So today is January and we are actually behind on some of our garden stuff for this year in Zone 8B and we have to do some garden work. So we are remeasuring our beds. This is the rough goal for next year. But not all of my beds have been cut to the same length. <laughs> And some of these have overwintered. Um, so I really need to, before I'm planning, I need to see what's gonna be here for much longer. Um, you know, we're trying very hard to get all of these strawberry plants out. Um, even though they were very happy, they were really difficult to manage um, when, when you're weeding around stuff. And so we still have beets in the garden and they've done well, they're nice and firm. And then some of our beds are just, you know, falling apart. So we need to replace some of these in order to prepare for what's coming this next year. And then we still have some parsnips hiding under there as well. There's some parsley. We have Claytonia everywhere. That's what these are. They become these, which is Claytonia, which it's a hardy, a hardy food. Um, I don't think I'll grow them on purpose again, um, mainly just because they're so hard to harvest. Um, they're not as easy yeah, as... The cabbage is open. I know, yeah, it just was on the other side. So you see that little cabbage that's kind of yucky right there? You can pick it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the cabbage that went right there. Yep. It's cut. Yep, somebody was playing around with it biggest pest in the garden is children's so I don't know children's? what what kind you see there's I don't know if they're thrips the little bugs that are still already out but there's already bugs these are some leeks no nope. and then over here what has survived the butter crunch lettuce it looks like that's the vertel spinach so over there that's the vertel spinach as well looks like the winter density survived maybe not exactly what you'd want to eat um, but it survived and if I remove some of these later um, it will be a first crop of something good oh I have cilantro and again oh these little what are those thrips some cilantro that I planted. I said that weird cilantro. I'm not exactly sure what this one is. Some sort of romaine or something probably. I've got some kale. Except for that looks like a rutabaga. I think that's a rutabaga. Oh, the Newham lettuce, maybe. No, I don't. More Claytonia. Tara gave us the plants and we planted them? No, oh, that was a long time ago. We've got more parsnips. Some of them are starting to put out greens again. We've got some very sad looking cabbages. Slug trap. A slug trap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, there's a potato. Yeah, I've seen that a couple days. Is it squishy? Hard as rock. Well, it's not going to store. Maybe we should go put this in our potato bed. Hang on, bud. Yeah, I'll, sh I'll show you that in a minute. That? No. I will show you. That's what the schematic in my hand is for. These are leeks that survived. The question is, um, will they bolt as soon as the weather gets hot? Again, another bed just rotting. Some, my um, Silverado chard is still going. Some of the kale. I've got another um, rutabaga, and I think that's what that one is as well. And then my garlic is coming up already, which is really interesting. And unfortunately, I did plant it all the way to the back, but I left the front open. So that means I'm gonna have to probably do something different this year. Over here, um, compared to what I had anticipated. This is music, garlic, 
It's one of my favorites. There has been some sort of creature digging in it, hence the traps. Um, it's probably not eating the garlic, but, and I'm not sure, this could be dill, it could be carrots, but it also could be chamomile. Let's see if it smells. I don't think it's dill, because it doesn't smell like it, so that might be chamomile. So this is gonna be our potato bed. There's another potato we found in there. That's not where we need it. Grace just threw it there. So against the house, I'm gonna try and rotate what we do over here. So we've just got weeds. Weeds, it's weeds, squishy. weeds. Yeah, I know, it's because she threw it on top. We've got some kale that's gonna be pulled out. More kale that's pulled, gonna be pulled out, but look at the top, that's interesting. And I think these are more possibly chamomile. I've got one little thing of thyme, another thing of thyme, and I love these. Um, what are they called? Ch -ch 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 -ch. Are the things that hold the little quinoa things? The flowers? No, nope. Alyssum. This is alyssum that self sows. I bought it once, and I've always had it. This year, I'm going to harvest the roots of this uh, echinacea and we transplanted our apples out of here because it was blocking the view when we're on our swing so i've got an echinacea there that i'm going to harvest can you guys my kids like to roller skate here can you please get the sprinkler and the stuff out of you mean roller blade? that's not what i want that's not what i want the hose stuff the things that attach to the hoses so we're gonna plant some flowers in the back and then maybe some potatoes in the front because I'm having a hard time figuring out where to put the potatoes. Um, but here's the garden. I also think I would like to try and make these one section in length because when they're two, they're very unwieldy. They're hard to maneuver and our septic is in here so we can't really plant things in here. But if I remember exactly where they are, I was thinking of moving our rosemary out here and the lemongrass I was going to move out as well. Um, and I'm gonna help my daughter in a minute because all we do when we replace this is we've been using these because they don't even require nails and we just put them roughly in the spot that we need and we put the new wood there and we can cut it, but if we couldn't, we could always ask um, Home Depot or wherever to cut it for us. Um, my goal this year is to get better at woodworking because my husband's taken a new job and it's been really difficult. And we need to finish um, fencing this in. And um, I'm hoping to leave another gate. We have a gate here that I need to fix because I don't like how it's done. And then I was gonna put another gate possibly here. Although some of these are a little close together. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of this pallet fence. It tends to block some of the light. We had a massive windstorm that kind of ripped out, um, tore up our greenhouse. And we had the mummy berries this last year on our blueberries. So we've been treating them with copper and we treated them with colloidal silver. Um, and we scooped out, thank you, Isaiah. We scooped out all of the stuff underneath it and trashed it. We did not compost it, added new in hopes that it would, it would have a better harvest this year. So eventually I think I am going to need to move those. <laughs> um, but I, there's a lot of things you just don't know when you're starting a garden. Um, we're hoping all of the strawberries will just be in here in our strawberry patch. And this is where we've got the smallest ball apple trees. And then here is the tomato tree that the little cousin called it you know we've got our figs we've got our 
pear trees that are practically sticks, the grafted one that never produces anything, our elderberries, our aronia berry, <laughs> and the, um, asparagus, that's what the kids are playing with. Look how tall those got. So anyway, um, and then you can see way down over there, we've got the flowering crab apple trees, which will get about 15 feet tall and hopefully will block the view um, from the neighbor's camper and their building. Um, as we've cleaned up this property, it's really exposed us to our neighbors, which is fine because we've got wonderful neighbors, but it would be nice to not see everything. Yeah, I'm sure they would probably like to not see all of us too. And the flowering crab apples will be beautiful. So anyway, lots to do. Happy gardening. I hope you have a prolific and fruitful uh, 2023.